Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Kevin. How are you doing today? Uh, digging out of the well right now, so. <laughs> the same cold you had last week, so this is off a week and a half, and that's the, this, this call and this is the only reason I'm not in Memphis in May right now, so. Oh, okay, well, let's, let's, let's make it good. Are you headed out there today? If I wasn't there for the partying part on Thursday, I'm not going to get there for the working part on Friday, so. <laughs> that makes sense, because, and so, so, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to find out, if say you have a day, say you're on a business trip, you have a day in Nashville, or you have a weekend, or you have a couple days, just places that, that you need to hit for sure, places maybe off the beaten path, and, and maybe if you could think of things that, specific items that you should order, or special things you shouldn't miss out on. Sure, no, that's, that, that's a good thing to do, and that is how I spend my weekend, so that's good. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. If you come to Nashville looking for a specific style of barbecue, you may be disappointed because we do not have what you would call Memphis style or Western North Carolina style or, or even, uh, even you know, Kansas City style. We are literally a crossroads city and that we have three major interstates that cross within a mile of each other in the middle of downtown. So okay. if you take I-40 this way, you end up in Memphis. If you go this way, you end up in Henderson, North Carolina. If you take 24 that way, you go to St. Louis and Kansas City. And if you take 65 that way, you're headed down to Northern Alabama where the white sauce is. Oh, interesting. Not only did those roads bring in lots of different pit masters from different parts of the country, but they brought in people that are looking for that kind of barbecue too. So the consumer asks for multiple kinds and the pit masters each have their own, you know, favorite style they like. That makes sense. So traditional old school Nashville barbecue was open pit. Um, that's what you would expect during the seventies. And it was probably closer to grilling than, than what we would call traditional barbecue now. Okay. There are still a few purveyors of that. Um, if you want to try, you know, I, I, I'd liken that to being closer to like a rendezvous rib, you know, cooked over charcoal on an yeah. open pit. Mary's Old Pit Barbecue over on Jefferson Street still does it that way. Um, it's uh, There's always something interesting going on in the parking lot at Mary's. So um, I tell people the food tastes just as good at 2 in the afternoon as it does at 2 in the morning. So I'd go at 2 in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes sense. You know, it's the same thing with Prince's Hot Chicken. It's up in... in uh, North of town, it's in a strip mall. It's probably not a neighborhood you'd be traveling through unless you were going to get hot chicken. Same thing with Mary's Barbecue. They're both worth the trip. Um, and like I said, the food's just as good during the day. Princess is open till 3 in the morning on the weekends, and there's no reason to be anywhere at 3 in the morning when you're our age. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, definitely. Another kind of old school place that gets derided a little more than it deserves, probably, there's a, there's a, Famous place downtown on Broadway called Jack's Barbecue. It's run by Jack Coffin. And Jack's been around since the days of the open pit barbecue. And he sometimes gets put down as being, you know, tourist barbecue because he does a St. Louis spare rib. He does uh, a smoked turkey. He does Memphis pulled pork. You know, he brands it regionally and does lots of different regions. But in my, in my mind, that's like saying that the Ryman Auditorium is a tourist trap because it has rock music and country music and music. I mean, just because you do a lot of things, mm -hmm. do them well, they're still worth visiting. I agree completely. And, uh, Jack being downtown on Lower Broad, he gets a lot of tourists in there, but he also has two other locations that are a little farther away from the urban core. So um, worth a visit. And again, Jack is one of the old old school barbecue guys from way back. So Would you recommend likes. going to that original location? I mean, the one, if you're downtown, uh, that's going to be one of your best bets. It's on Lower Broadway. It's between the honky tonks, and it's uh, you know I I don't call it tourist barbecue. Okay, you will be surrounded by tourists, but it's not tourist barbecue. How's that? Yeah, so, there's a there's a differentiation. The first place I would send you downtown though is a couple blocks off of Broadway, and that would be the huge mothership location of Martin's Barbecue. Okay, and Pat Martin has opened up. He originally opened in Nolensville, which is a little bit south of Nashville. And since then, he's opened five other Martins in and around Nashville, and one up in Louisville with another one coming in Louisville. So um, Martin's Barbecue Joint is a absolute premier place in Nashville. He's, he's the only purveyor of whole hog left in Middle Tennessee. And he grew up cooking it in Henderson, Tennessee when he was going to college. And back then, in those days, there were, you know, there might have been 10 places doing whole hog in Henderson, and now you're down to just one or two. It is a horribly inefficient way to cook a pig. There's a there's a lot of waste involved in uh, in uh, whole hog. I think out of a 180 pound pig, they might get 60 pounds of meat. Uh, but the fact that 
you know, that is how he believes uh, barbecue should be done and how it is done in West Tennessee. Um, I love that he's keeping that tradition alive. So, Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, a fantastic restaurant on the bottom floor, but the top floor is one of my happy places. It's a big old open beer garden. Oh, that's he's got pink, he's got bar shuffleboard, and the, uh, the one design flaw is to get to the men's room, you have to walk in front of all the dartboards. So <laughs> stay alert. <laughs> Great. I didn't realize he had five locations. He does, and this one is definitely the largest of all of them. Uh, it's the decor, the decor in there. It's, it's fantastic. You know, it's it's heavy metal albums and country albums and sports superstar heroes of his uh, friends he's made from the local teams like the Predators and the Titans are all over the walls. Oh, that's so cool. You see a few pictures of me over the bar. Nice. Kind of a shrine. And if you're going to eat at Martin's, I mean, he's got the full the full gamut of smoked meats. I'd say he does one of the best briskets in town, and we're not a brisket city. Um, the only a few places try it, and he does a really good job on it, pays close attention to it. Uh, certainly his whole hog. Uh, probably the best way to sample anything he does is what he calls a redneck taco. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Which is a corn cake with whatever meat you choose, be it smoked chicken, smoked turkey, shoulder, whole hog, uh, and then it must be dressed with slaw or you have a fight on your hands from Pat. So oh, he's a perfect. That's great. That's fantastic. He also does some, some great... Uh, Wings, smoked wings. We like to get them with dry rub and Alabama white sauce on the side. I could, that was our kind of playoff ritual. Was that and a Yazoo Daddy O beer? And I think in two two seasons we're eleven and four pre gaming at Martin's having that. So. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like my buddy Rufus wants to get in on this. Hop down, Rufus. Hey, Rufus. What's Rufus's is his favorite place to go to? Rufus likes to eat wherever I am. So <laughs> does Rufus travel with you? Uh, he's. Not really good around other dogs. He's great around people. So, okay. You know, we'll, we'll put him in the car and take him from point to point, but he's not the kind of dog you just want to go for a walk out with. Cause okay, that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> he wants to tear ass. He know, sounds so. like a Rufus. Yeah, he's a total Rufus. Other places in town that I would recommend. Um, oh, and definitely, yeah, the ribs at, at Pats are great. Um, he, does, he does both spares and baby backs. I will say that I am kind of existentially against baby back ribs. Because I think they don't taste like anything, and every baby back is one pork chop that was not allowed to come into fruition. So uh, <laughs> you've eliminated a whole rack of pork chops by cutting it that way. So. <laughs> I'd like to cut that out, that little bit that you just said there, too, and I'd re replay yeah. that for people. Spare. Probably the other two most notable places in town, the ones that get in all the write ups and deservedly so, are Peg Leg Porker and Edley's Barbecue. Okay. Tell me about Peg Leg Porker. Kerry Bringle is the peg leg porker. He literally has one leg. Mm -hmm. uh, if you ask him, he'll tell you a different story every time about how he lost it. I've heard him tell people that uh, they named the competitive barbecue team the peg leg porkers, and they all made a vow that they'd cut off one of their legs, and like an idiot, he went first. I interviewed him. He didn't tell me that. Swimming down at Pickwick, and he got bit by an otter, and it got infected. Um, the is true story, he lost him when he was in high school. Uh, to cancer, but he's, you know, just any of his spirit. He is absolutely one of the great characters of barbecue. Oh, without a doubt. And a super entrepreneur. I mean, he's got competitive barbecue. He's won, he won third place in Whole Hog in Memphis in May a couple of years ago. He's got his own lines of, he's selling uh, barbecue to Cisco, so he's selling wholesale barbecue. He's selling his own pork rinds, chicharrones, uh, his rubs and all that. And then he's got his restaurant, and he's also got um, a spirits. Yeah, side. the he's bourbon, right? Whiskey. He's got a yeah. He's got a bourbon whiskey, and he's got a uh, kind of a citrus shot. He calls Fever. Oh, I didn't know about that one. Yeah. So I mean, on top of that, he makes fantastic barbecue. He he found a building and eventually bought it after a couple of years. And he's right in the middle of the Gulch, super hot neighborhood right now. But I love that. Carrie's also got background in West Tennessee. He built it, and it immediately looked like an old Jackson, Tennessee barbecue block shack that had been there for 50 years. That's awesome. You know, he built it old. I mean, it's got the same Pepsi sign with the white sign and the little black letters that slide across it. It, it looks like he walked in right to the camp oh, that's so of, an old, that's so of an old pit. And he makes, without a doubt, the best Memphis-style dry rubber ribs in town. He does good wings, too, but I'd say his yard bird, his quarter chicken... Probably the best barbecue chicken in town. Oh, wow. Okay. Just added on a second-story deck, and he's actually putting a third story on top of that because he said 
that he's committed to being a single location barbecue. He doesn't want to be a chain. He just wants to take his little kingdom there, his fiefdom, and make it as big as possible and add as much to it. So that is, that's respectable. Definitely make it into sea peg leg. Already, I already. I, I could just go to those two places and I'd be happy. Um, the third one I mentioned was Edley's. Yeah. Edley's tends to locate, they've got three locations, and they're really smart about their real estate. I mean, they've, they opened up, their first one was in the hot 12 South neighborhood, which is full of restaurants and bars, and but also it's in the middle of a residential area so families can come there. Will Will Newell that owns Edley's was smart enough that when they first opened, there weren't many restaurants in that neighborhood, and he was smart enough just to take a big green egg and just have some charcoal cooking outside. <laughs> Nothing on it, just to get some smoke coming out to draw people That's in. That's smart. That's really smart. Since then, he's opened another one up in East Nashville in another really similar neighborhood where there's restaurants but also residential around him to draw people in. And then his third place is in Sylvan Park. So, um, What's his background? Um, I'm trying to remember Will's background. I want to say that uh, he's from Northern Alabama. I know that. I don't think he was in the restaurant business. He partnered with a guy named Brett Tuck, who is kind of the culinary side of it. Okay. So, oh, wow. Brett, he's the one that came up with the Tuck Special Sandwich. What's that? Is, it is a brisket sandwich with both their white sauce and their red sauce on it, topped with a runny fried egg. And <laughs> oh, I am so. You're, I should not have done this this early, especially so far it's away from. Not long sleeve food. How's that? <laughs> oh, that is great. You got a plan to wipe it off later. That sounds delicious. One thing that Will also really con concentrates on, his meats are fantastic. It's a little chefier, like I said, Brett, you know, kind of composing a sandwich. Uh, they do some really good tacos there, too, so you might get, you know, their carnitas or, you know, might get a brisket taco there. Oh, cool. But they concentrate on their side dishes. So um, Nashville's got the tradition of meat and three, where you go to, a, go to a theme table and you choose your meat, and then you might choose three vegetables and... Luckily in Nashville, macaroni and cheese is a vegetable, pudding is a vegetable, jello is a vegetable. <laughs> so, it's all, Edley's more like a smoked meat in three. Okay. She really concentrates on having good southern sides. That's great. So, yeah, in any one of the locations, they're really comfortable, family friendly, you know, it's fast casual service, but you feel like you're in a, you know, a nice dining restaurant. Oh, that. so, oh that's great. Over near Centennial Park, a, a long time place that's been there for years, it's called Hog Heaven. Okay. It's right across the street from Vanderbilt University. So um, they were probably the first ones in town to bring a white sauce. Huh. They introduced you know, generations of Andy students to their smoked chicken, their smoked turkey with a white sauce. So that kind of mayonnaise, vinegar base. Mm -hmm. um, you know you've gone to a good old school pit when the front door is a screen door. Yes. Because you, know, you walk through a screen door up to a window and you bang on the window and you have So you on a picnic table or you take it out, you know, you're... you're 15 feet from being in the park. So grab it to go, take out a picnic, and they do a really good job. Oh, that's so, a great one. Awesome. One more locally that I'd like to talk about uh, is a place called The Gambling Stick. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, it's actually just a trailer. It's in the parking lot, the front parking lot of Porter Road Butcher over in East Nashville. So Matt Russo used to work at the butcher shop and used to do a lot of cooking with their meat for the butcher shop and decided to spin out on his own, so he made it you know, 20 feet out of the butcher shop and put in a trailer and a smoker. So he gets his meats from Porter Road, who actually owns their own processing facility. So Wow, I yeah, love that. Providence of that meat all the way back to the farmer, and then it's all within a couple hundred miles. That's and great. You've got the treatment of the meat from the field to the processing house to the butcher to the smoker. That's the way it so should be. He's fantastic at that. Um, to give in to, you know, the fact that we do have some cold days here in, in Nashville, even though we're in the south, um, he put in a canvas tent with a wood stove inside it. So it's like being in a Civil War mess tent. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds right. Bad. Close the flap and you stoke the fire and you end up smoke, smelling like smoke from what's inside you and what's outside you. But he does really, really interesting, because he's a little chefy too, so... Okay. Interesting preparations. He does something he calls pig skit, which is a brisket off the front of the pig. So, because the butcher, you know, he finds cuts that other people don't don't work with ordinarily. So he's not going to settle for just a shoulder or just a ham. Or so um, his pig skit's got this great short grain to it, uh, but it's got a lot of pull. Uh, but does he slice pig. it like a brisket? He does. Oh. So, but it's really short. You know, I mean, the whole the whole piece may be what, four or five pounds, so okay. smokes really well. 
Um, he takes his burn ends and he puts them into his into his baked beans. So he's got fantastic side dishes. So it's literally a place you pull up in the parking lot for lunch and uh, place your order and go sit in the tent and eat it or you know, get you get your bulk to take home with you. Does he have an offset smoker? Is that how he does it? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got a smoker in a park in the parking lot behind it. So is that something people can have in Nashville? Can they have offset smokers, or are they legitimate? Like, can you? Yeah, I mean, as long as it's outside. Okay. I mean, and a couple, you know, most places that do an inside smoker are going to have a, you know, a, an old South or an old Hickory or something like that. Gotcha. So I don't. Yeah, anybody that's got a wooden tent with a with or a canvas tent with a wooden stove in it probably isn't going to have a vent anywhere either. So <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely. Gambling stick. I definitely recommend that. Okay. And the the origin of the term gambling stick was they used to hang uh, the pigs when they were when they were cleaning them when they were slaughtering them they would hang them from a tripod made out of sticks oh. and you gamble that the stick would be strong enough to hold the pig up while you <laughs> while you were working on it. So. Wow, that's great. That's uh, that's, that's such a cool. Pig kind of on a tripod mm-hmm. hanging down. So definitely look them up while you're in town. I will for sure. Besides those, I mean, I think it's a great itinerary if you do want to travel. A little bit out of town. Um, there's a place out in White Bluff, which is uh, west of town, called Carl's Perfect Pig. Okay. That's one of our kind of local favorites. Before we had these, you know, three or four great new places in town in the last five six years, you know, we would make that pilgrimage to Carl's a little more often. Okay. How far out is that again? Uh, it's not even an hour. So okay. if White Bluff. It's toward Dixon, Hohenwald, that area down there. And then uh, if you're going Murfreesboro, which is south and east. Headed toward Chattanooga, uh, there's a place that locals really love called called the Slick Pig. Pretty straightforward, great shoulder sandwich. Um, you know, again, I unless I'm traveling, I'm going to stay close to home. I can I can walk to an Edley's, I can walk to a, Bar- a Martin's. So between those two, um, I need the walk. So we all. But it also too the fact that when when you when you come into town, you're probably not going to be driving an hour or 45 minutes to an hour outside. You'll want to go somewhere local, and those are all great great options. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, and they're they're urban core. I mean, most of them are. We're, we've turned into a great Uber and Lyft city, which is great. Um, we just got those little bird cycles, you know, the little scooters. I would not recommend scooting between. <laughs> Your hands might be a little greasy to hang on to the handle. <laughs> Definitely. Is it, is it a, a pretty walkable city? You know, there's so much construction going on in the urban core right now. I lead walking walking food tours for a company called Walk Eat Nashville. Okay. And I have to tell the people up front, you're going to think I'm crazy because we're going to cross the street 14 times today, but the sidewalk doesn't always connect to where we need to go. Okay. So, you know, every time I do the trip, I have to kind of scout it out to see where the construction is this week. But we're definitely moving toward being a more walkable city. The core is walkable. Again, you may just have to cross the street a couple times, get where there's not, you know, a crane on the sidewalk or So it's cha- it's changing and evolving to it. Oh, absolutely. And I will say that selfishly, you know, I've lived in my house. I live close enough to downtown where I can take a bus downtown in 15 minutes for a buck and a quarter. Wow. Uh, so the, the people that are feeling it are the people that 10 years ago moved out to the burbs with the idea that they were going to have a 20 minute commute into town. But now that downtown is so full and we're getting infill between the urban core where I live and the suburbs out there, what they plan to be a 20 minute commute to be able to take advantage of downtown might have turned into a 40, 45 minute trip because that's where the people are moving. Okay. Luckily they're outside of me. So selfishly I get all the, all the benefits of a growing city and you know, there's no place that's going to keep me from walking or riding my bike or, even driving, I've just kind of given up on the concept of parking downtown. So, oh, really? Is, are there any tips for parking downtown? Say you're, say you're staying a little outside of downtown. Is there any? Well, embrace the valet. You know, if there's a valet parker, you know, if it costs five bucks, pay him five bucks. Okay. Cost anything, tip him five bucks. Um, you know, the rest. Five bucks isn't bad. <laughs> yeah, no, not compare. I mean, the I guarantee the cheapest lot you'll find is ten bucks. So, um, and another trick that a lot of people don't know is you can park on the other side of the river. Uh, in one of the Titans parking lots, lot R, and that's by the pedestrian bridge. And the pedestrian bridge will walk you across the Cumberland River. It's a beautiful walk, great view of downtown. Might take you five, ten minutes tops, and it'll drop you off pretty much in the shadow of Martin's Barbecue. That's so, great. Oh, so right there. You got to do that. It's a five minute walk from from uh, Jack's, maybe a ten minute walk to Pegleg. And on the way to Pegleg, you'll go by Arnold's Country Kitchen, which is 
the greatest meat and three in the world. I, I call it a top five restaurant in Nashville. Only open for lunch Monday through Friday. So. Oh, that's great. Thank you. That's perfect. You're here for lunch. Hit Arnold's. Okay. And, and what do you think about the whole Nashville hot chicken trend? Um, I have a lot of discussions about Nashville hot chicken. Um, I say that once you're on the KFC menu, you've probably jumped the shark. Yeah. It doesn't I was mean think that, of that last night. <laughs> it doesn't mean that Nashville hot chicken has gotten better. It means that attempts to make Nashville hot chicken outside of Nashville are probably pretty futile at this point. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't blame that on anybody that's trying it. I blame it on, you know, 50 years of development and punishment to the palate here in Nashville where, you know, we've been driven to want something that spicy, that hot. It would be as if, you know, you moved to Thailand and it took you a while to start craving that spicy food, but eventually you would not want to come back and have it in Seattle or LA or Nashville because the Thai food just wouldn't do it for you. So um, people can call it Nashville hot chicken, you know, the same way that you call Buffalo wings, Buffalo wings, if you're having them in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if you want to go for originality or you really want to taste the real thing, you need to go to the local places like Prince's and 400 Degrees. And, um, you'll see hot chicken on just about every plate here. Hattie Bee is certainly a very popular place in town. Um, definitely a good good place to visit if you want to try hot chicken. But Hattie, Hattie Bee's is not old. It's not old school, right? It's it's, uh, it's probably the most successful of all of them. Uh, they've already done some expansions outside of Nashville, and their chicken is definitely legitimate chicken. I mean, they 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 get it as hot as people want it here. Um, you know, there's the same way that there's barbecue. You look at Martin's. You know, Martin's has expanded into into six locations and it is it is very well operated it's very professional it's still got the soul of a barbecue yeah, they still care yeah still got the commitment to it so do i hate that it's a chain not at all is it different from a single location shack out in the country somewhere absolutely sure you know so prince's is different from hattie b's they both deserve to exist they both offer something uh, you know if i need the convenience I may go to Martin's and get fantastic barbecue. If I'm feeling like, you know, getting back where the pit is, I may go to Carl's Perfect Pig. I may make that drive. So, gotcha. thing with hot chicken. I cannot recommend going to the original Prince's enough, um, but if you decide you like one of the other 20 really good hot chicken places in Nashville, I won't begrudge you one bit. <laughs> tell me what your favorite is. So. Okay, that's excellent, yeah. <laughs> and right, Chris, and tell them. People do all the time. Yeah. So. He'll respond. He responded to me, so he'll respond to you. Who is this Kevin guy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why does he keep pe like peppering me with emails? That's uh, yeah. i i uh, if if anything, I'm persistent and uh, I'm passionate. So that's definitely. Let to be a part of this. It's yeah. Great. No, I'm so I'm so, uh, I am beyond happy that you're part of this. I, it's this is a wealth and all. Are there any really quick just to wrap it up? Is there one or two other places that you should definitely not miss? I didn't ask you this before, but. Are there any other type, like other restaurants, like if you come to Nashville, you got to make sure you go to this place. Sure, sure. Um, you know, there's there's been this real push toward farm to table. Uh, farm to table is fantastic. We're in such a breadbasket here in Nashville that, you know, we like to think that's the norm. Everything should be farm to table. You know, where else is it going to come from? Is it lab to table? I'm not sure. You know, so, uh, that being said, we have some fantastic restaurants that, source regional regional food seasonal food you know husk is a top 10 restaurant yes, in the country without a doubt city house is a fantastic restaurant uh rolf and daughters both city house and rolf and daughters do kind of a rustic mediterranean menu oh. but it also features some southern ingredients so it's kind of a nice you know they might use grits instead of polenta and catfish instead of instead of cod or something oh, like that that's so, ideal but fantastic chefs a uh, place called the Farmhouse. Those are all in Margo over at East Nashville. You'd be surprised at what a fine kind of continental French bistro we've got here in Nashville. Oh, that's Dallas. cool. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so um, there's all sorts of great places to come. Um, I don't just you know, believe what, believe what you hear from friends. Don't believe what you read on Yelp. So. <laughs> Always. I think that's a, that's the best takeaway I could ever, you could ever give. <laughs> Well, well, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're feeling better, and uh, thank you for your uh, for the great advice. I think this is a this is invaluable. So, thank you so much.
Well, <laughs> yeah, have a great day. Have a nice weekend, and uh, I'll, I'll shoot shoot this over to you. And and also, I'll I'll send you a list of uh, of the um, the restaurants, and so that if there's anything you need to add or want to add, let me know. Cool. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much. I really really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Take care.